This voyage, long and strange, began right here at Plymouth Harbor, where I stopped several years ago to see this icon of American history, Plymouth Rock. As you can see, it's not very impressive. I'd anticipated something like the Rock of Gibraltar and instead found this lump of granite that locals refer to as the Plymouth Pebble. The real surprise for me was a conversation I had um, with a ranger. What this ranger told me was that many visitors think that Columbus sailed here and dropped off the pilgrims and sailed home. Most visitors are completely confused about early American history. This period for me was also a blank. So I decided to fill in that hole in my knowledge. And the result is this book, A Voyage Long and Strange. I'm a journalist by training, not a historian. I'm as interested in the present as I am in the past. So when I write about history, I try and weave the past and present together. I like to get my hands dirty. Uh, I do what you might call participatory history. I try and inhabit the past. For instance, in this book, uh, at one point, I join a band of conquistador reenactors who put on 50 pounds of Spanish armor to experience what it was like to be Hernando de Soto staggering through the swamps of Florida in the 16th century. One aspect of, of why we remember American history the way we do, I think, is that it provides convenient heroes and sacred places. At Plymouth, we have the Rock. It's a wonderful place to learn about our history, but it's only a small piece of our early history. Most of the history in this book is based on the words of the explorers themselves. They just jump off the page. They give you a sense of the, the wonder and terror of discovery and first contact with Native Americans and with this unknown continent. To me, history shouldn't be hard work. It, it shouldn't be homework. I, I, I want readers to feel uh, the same excitement about history that I do and also frankly to be entertained by it.